So today we will read Vilapa Kusumanjali, verse 42. I don't know, is it Gurudev here or not? Okay, I will start. With even the slightest blink from the corners of your eyes, you immediately tie down the king of elephants Krishna, tightly. When will this person worship those two eyes that defeat the fickleness of vectail birds with eye liner? with even the slightest blink from the corners of your eyes, you immediately tie down the king of elephants, Krishna, tightly. When will this person worship those two Eyes that defeat the fickleness of the vectail bird with eye liner. It's very nice words, which is describing how Raghunath slowly finishing his morning seva, preparing Shimati Radhika for meeting with her beloved Mohan. And we can see here how he is very eager to worship Radhika's two eyes. This is very intimate, seva. And it requires closeness. To approach someone so close, face to face, to look directly to her, to the eyes of that person, knowing exactly what is in the heart and mind of that person and then do this kajal seva putting the mascara kajal around the eye of swamini in that way Raghunath, like a Tulsi Manjari, because this seva is possible to do directly to Radhika in Swarupvesh. He is worshipping these beautiful eyes of Shimati Radharani. And another thing is that with these Two eyes, Radhika wants also to worship Krishna. She knows his heart and his mind and how he is eager to look at her eyes to be seen with Radhika's eyes, to dive deeply in her eyes. Why Krishna wants to 
dive deeply in Radhika Sai's. Because through her eyes, he sees her deep, deep love for him. And in Croatia, we can once saying, I don't know, for other countries, that through the eyes, we can see the soul. Eyes are like a window of the soul. So, Tulsi is completely focused on the eyes of Radhika and Radhika is completely focused that through her eyes he direct her emotions into Mohan's heart. And because of that, it is written in these words that her eyes are very fickle, very unsteady, nervous a little bit, because she is burning in the desire to give Krishna pleasure with her glance. And in that way, she is showing how she is merciful to Krishna, to her beloved. He is show, she is showing that she doesn't have anyone else but only him. But also, Tulsi doesn't have anyone else but Shimati Radharani. And Goravani was singing into the in introduction bhajan, Tavai was me, Tavai was me, putting us all in this flow that Tulasi Manjari actually doesn't have anyone else. I am yours, I am yours, and you are mine, you are mine. And I don't care for anything else. I want to look only at you. I want only to serve you. So this is the desire of the heart of Raghunath. And in very sweet mood, he is expressing his desire to serve Radhika like this, but also he is describing her deep emotions. So, as Tulasi wants to serve Radhika's sides, Radhika wants to serve her Mohan with her eyes, knowing how it will give him great, great pleasure. We can continue. If someone wants to comment, please. Today I'm not so much in the mood. I'm pretty weak. Please help me that we can go in this stream which Raghunath is giving us and now Ananta Das Babaji with his commentary is trying to put us more deeper. Srimad Raghunath Das Goswami 
attains virtual succession of relishable devotional service to Swamini. Devotees that are fixed in Smarana will also attain these relishable services within their minds. When Smarana becomes so deep, it is called Dhyana or meditation. This Dhyana is the best means of meeting the Lord face to face. So we can see here how meditation is important, but not ordinary meditation, but deep meditation. It brings the Lord face to face. And we can see how much Raghunath is connected with Swamini. There is no any circumstances in his life when he doesn't think deeply on Swami. In all circumstances, he is completely absorbed in his beloved Radhika. And this seva which he wants to make, he is doing face to face. And he is doing it through meditation, deep meditation. And by uh, Swamini's mercy, he has a strong vision of this beautiful situation. When Radhika is sitting in the bathroom, she is already dressed, and Tulasi is putting different ornaments on her face. And one of the last ornaments on Radhika's face is to put Kajal. So this face-to-face -face meditation, uh, sorry, this face-to-face -face realization, visualization, is possible by Radhika's mercy, to the devotee who is deeply absorbed in the thoughts, in the feelings of Shimata Radharani. Then visions can appear. Radhe, Radhe. I was just looking at these words, this dhyana or nidhi dhyasana. Nidhi means ocean also. Dhyana, dhya, asana, seed. If we put these words together, I think it's not without a reason that Ananda Das Babaji is actually taking these words exactly here in the connection with face to face. So if we have an ocean of jhana directly in front of our face, that means we are looking into Radharani's eyes because these eyes are like an ocean opening possibilities of jhana because her meditation about her beloved is endless endless in all aspects in sweetness and in all other aspects like lavanya 
and so on. So it's endless in endless to describe the endless oceans. But in these words, actually, Baba is giving us a very nice meditation. Sitting close by in jhana, in deep meditation, and looking in these eyes, and they are like Nidhi, endless ocean. So this position, to get this position, is undescribable, wonderful, undescribable, sweet. And here, Baba is giving us a hint. But maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. No, dear. No, dear. Because later on... No. Rade, Rade. Say, yes, Jananda-ji. Uh, Baba <laughs> will say similar things. And it's very nice. Uh, yes, Jananda-ji, please. Yes, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, Gorabani ji. I just also just to <clears throat> just to this Diana or Nidi Diasana. I also f you know feel something. And uh, so chanting Mahamantra. Actually we can we can chant at any place. Like walking also okay. But if we chant Gayatri, it's recommended. One place, every day sitting one place, and then uh, sitting and meditation. Like Kesha Baba sitting one place, and usually some Baba, uh, sitting place, the fixing, and then a uh, meditation. This is, uh, I felt, uh, because needy, so Gorabani explained nicely, and uh, dear asana. So, because uh, if we moving, say, if we walking, and sometimes difficult to fix our mind in one point. And if we want to see face to face, say if we walking face to face, it's not so sometimes easy. If we want to sit, you know, see a uh, face to face, then we have to sit, we have to stand one place. So, in this word, I little bit understanding why Kesha Baba say sitting one place and do meditation. Or Guru Dev say sitting one place and then meditation. That's, uh, I felt this Nidhi Dhyasana. So this is, uh, for me, this is, uh, oh my God, this is interesting. And then asana and this dhyana also needy. Because later on, uh, durbanu smriti is, is appear. So, means many, many dira, or many, many feeling, or many, many rasa will appear. So, I feel therefore this uh, needy. Like Radha Mohan's leader is ocean of rasa and ocean of prema and ocean of baba feeling. That's I just felt. Rade rade. Thank you very much, both of you, because now we have complete picture. 
Thank you very much. I can continue to read, if you allow me. In the Patanjala... Yes? Uh, you know, like Punyas, you want to share one thing, so... I yes, please. Rather, rather. Sorry, <laughs> I didn't want to actually share with everyone, but <laughs> Chananda said I should. I, I was just surprised that Chananda actually now said this with um, sitting down and meditating. Um, because today I, I went Parikram and I also thought, okay, I will also try to chant. I, I took both my chapas. I found, okay, maybe I also try to chant other Diksha Chapa. Mm -hmm. But I also felt actually what said it's, it's, even though it's Parikram and even though it's Vrindavan Parikram, I, I don't know, I felt it's easier to sit and go in. So this I wanted to just, uh, <laughs> just share. I think with, uh, with Parikram, I felt maybe better to do Maha Mantra. <laughs> Not, not Diksha Mantra. <laughs> so, so it's so surprising that you just said no, no? Oh my God. This is, I don't know. But uh, this, I also experience, you know, same thing. You know, sometimes, you know, I have no, I don't have enough time to, you know, I know sitting to, to chanting Gayatri is, is best, but sometimes we were too passionate, you know, or sometimes, oh no, I don't have enough time, or I want to chant this round, you know. Mm -hmm. So then, then start, you know, do, not sitting, but it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So then I, I, I give up this process. Oh my God, this is actually good day true. You know, Keshava said it's true. Mm. So I have to sit and then more peaceful and then try to meditate. Yeah. <laughs> so Punyaji is, you know, this kind of feeling and realization. I think it's good for, I think everybody, especially for me, <laughs> it's very nice. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. In the Patanjala Darshan, it is written to, fi to fix one's mind on a single object without interruption is called dhyana or meditation. To fix one's mind on a single object without interruption is called dhyana or meditation. According to Sri Jiva Goswami, this refers to deep meditation or Dhruva Anusmriti. Sripad Shankaracharya describes this kind of deep meditation, which he calls Upasana, as follows in the introduction of his commentary of the Chandogya Upanishad. So we can see here, Shankaracharya describes that deep meditation is also called upasana. And Gauravani mentioned this important word, to be closed by explaining this previous word. To sit, to be closed with the ocean, And then meditation can become fixed on one object without interruption. But without feelings of closeness, 
it's not possible to meditate without interruption. So we need emotional closeness and to receive that emotional closeness with object of our love, we need mercy. We need that emotions from object of our love and her representatives be infused in our heart. And when these emotions are deeply infused, then meditation will be possible without so much interruption. Then Sadaka can experience upasana, closeness. Closeness is the state of emotions, it's not the physical closeness. And with proper mood, with proper bhava, with proper emotions, sadaka can be close with person on whom he is meditating with heart and mind, not only mind, but with heart and mind. Why it is so important that the heart actually is involved? Sorry, but you inspired me. We have to make this thing very clear. Because the mind is never steady if the heart is not involved. If you don't have any feelings, attachment, then the mind is not stable. We know that. We know that from practice. You need to be attached to the object you want to meditate on. If there is no attachment, so the heart will not be involved. So your heart has to be involved to be attached. And if we start to just grow the wish in the heart that we one day can meditate on the eyes of Radha, attachment will grow because Radharani is completely merciful. Her whole existence is melting. And if she knows that one of her maidservants lost here in this world really wants to meditate on her eyes one day, she will start to cry immediately and then you will feel these drops of her tears. And then you will be involved. Your heart will feel attachment. Then steadiness will come. But this is just theory for me. Sorry. No, no. This is not a theory. This is what you are practicing what we all are trying to practice, but you put it in very nice words. In my Direct, case, just... Directed us, now giving us proper instructions that we cannot only artificially sit <laughs> and meditate. It will never happen. We have to sit, but what does it mean to sit? To be fixed in Staibhav. This means to sit, because when we are sitting in Staibhav, we will be close to our object of meditation. Because the Staibhava can never appear without emotions in the heart. And by meditation on form, spirit of form which Radhika gave us through our beloved Gurudev. We also have to meditate on feelings of that form. Because Manjari Bhava is not just the form of beautiful young girl who is very similar to Radhika. No, this is Bhava Deha. Emotions of this sweet young 
loving girl. And when these emotions, like Goravani said, comes just little in our heart, then the process of meditation will start to grow and becoming thick, 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 condensed, condensed, and condensed. Meditation, deep meditation, is possible only when the emotions are deep and thick. This is my understanding and practice, honestly to say. I'm far away from that, but I don't want anything else. <laughs> Nade, Nade. Rade, Rade, Janoji, please. So, Gorabani Ji and you inspire me. So, I want to add a little Baba's word. And also, we are discussing with Gurudev, Birapak Sumanjari, and Bas 20. So, I want to read Baba, what, what Baba write. So, Ragnata Das Goswami, the vision disappear. So, lacking his desired service, Sri Ragnata cries, but by Swamini's grace, he gets a transcendental vision of his Siddha service. So, in this sentence, Gurudev said, so if we cry, if we have too much greed, then feeling is coming, then cry, then we can get the mercy of Radhika. Then, by Swamini's grace, one get transcendental vision of his Siddha service. So Gorabani, Baba explained, only mind is does not work, should be feeling, and this feeling condensed. So Goranga Sundara, Baba also said, this feeling condensed, this and crying is coming, and too much greediness coming, hankar is coming. Then, Swamini give us uh, mercy, and then we get vision. So, this Baba was saying, uh, this is, uh, I think, same uh, kind of story. Rade, rade. Rade, rade, Crying is dying. When someone feels that he will die, then he is crying. Without feeling of dying, I am lost without you. Where I will go, there is no crying. So we have to feel, I belong to you, you belong to me. And then maybe some real spiritual tears. By Gurudev's Radhika's mercy can appear. And this is the proof that emotions are the most important. Without emotions, spiritual emotions of the soul, because Raghunath is crying from the soul. not from this body. It can be visible on this body. It's not necessary. But he is crying, and this attracts Radhika to give him mercy and appear in front of him. So, Upasana, means to hold on to certain object 
of meditation according to scriptural injunctions and fix the mind on it in a such a way that other thoughts cannot interrupt. It's interesting. <laughs> First on spiritual injunctions. And what does it mean? Does it mean by the rules, regulations, according to spiritual injunctions? No. Which kind of spiritual injunctions? And Raghunath, in these words, is giving us which kind of scriptural injunctions we should meditate. We should meditate on his meditation because he is opening the secret of his heart, of his meditation, of his visions. He is pulling us, come, come, stand beside me. Look what I can offer to you. And this is gift for you. This is Kripa. This is mercy. To look through my eyes, Radhika's eyes. So this, this is my understanding and feeling of scriptural Injunction. Which kind of scriptural injunctions? Rasik for attaining Manjaribab. These spiritual injunctions, and this is why this Vilapa Kusumanjali is so important because it's full of injunctions or instructions to attain feelings and meditation. And to learn how to think like a manjari, to feel like a manjari, and to serve like a manjari. This is spiritual injunction of Vilapa Kusivanjali, which is so valuable for everyone who wants to attain position of Radha Dasi, Anudasi, Anudasi, Anudasi. Rade, rade. And again, Upa Asana. Upa Asana was explained by Ananda Das Babaji so wonderful. Upa means to stay nearby, to be nearby, to be close, to have closeness, intimate. Asana. Take a seat. So take a seat and stay nearby. Stay with me. This is the invitation of Radharani always. Not just once. Always for us. It's on us if we take this invitation or not. Any time, any place. But especially when we sit down and chant our mantras, we should take this seat and try to be as near as possible. So please, all you nice devotees, maybe pray for me and for all of you. Let us pray together that we can stay nearby. To stay only in Staibhav. Because if we have other desires, it will be sanctuary jumping left, right, up and down, like Guru Dev is saying, ping pong. 
and we can sit on one place, but without Stai Baba, we will run all around the universe. So we need the mercy of Vaishnavas, like Gauravani said, to sit, to situate it ourselves. And for this crazy mind of mine, wild mind of mine, it's not so easy because the heart is also wild. Now, I need a little bit more time. But it's very important that nice devotees are guiding me in the proper direction. So, we need association of each other, guided by Gurudev and others. The best way for devotee, I will continue, the best way for devotee to enhance his meditation is to chant the holy name of the Lord in the company of other devotees. Punyam gave us beautiful realization. What does it mean to chant a holy name? The more devotee's heart gets purified by this practice of Nama Sankirtana, the more devotee's heart gets purified by this practice of Nama Sankirtana. And the goddess of devotion, Bhakti Devi, becomes manifest in the heart. The closer devotee will get to the kingdom of Dhruva Anusmriti meditation and will be blessed by attaining spotless bliss. So Baba is answering, he's giving golden formula, how to practice Upasana. First he is saying, chanting the holy name, Nama Sankirtan. But how to chant Nama Sankirtan? Superficially, mechanically, automatically, or I will meditate as much as I can on the Nama of my beloved Ishtadev. or the Nama of Yugala Kishore. Then this kind of Nama Sankirtana will purify my heart, mechanically chanting will not give such a nice result. So we can see here that without emotions, we cannot do anything. There is no result without emotions, proper emotions, spiritual emotions. Could you kindly explain Truva Anusmriti? You can explain. Or Janandaji. Maybe you can explain more nicely. Oh. Could you explain Goranga Sundaraji? I have to obey to your instruction. What can I do? For my purification, it will be beneficial. Yeah. So we, sh we should understand when we speak about meditation, 
Diana, there's four types, five types of different meditations. First type of meditation is a smarana. And this kind of, this smarana is actually thinking. We cannot call it meditation. It's thinking about object which I want to attain. And in that process, sometimes devotee is thinking, sometimes he is forgetting. Sometimes he is more thinking, and suddenly he forgets it. And again, he is trying to repeat his thinking process of Smarana. Another stage, when Ruchi becomes more condensed, devotee is accepting that he doesn't have to go with his mind all around the universe. He is not guided with his other desires than to attain desirable goal. In that moment, he agree. Okay, Dharana. I agree. I accept. Because why we cannot chant, uh, meditate? Because we don't accept. That is the only solution for our life, for our jiva. We still sometimes have other conceptions which are penetrating our heart because the heart is not enough pure. And other conceptions are present there, and they are making disturbances. But when devotees say, okay, that's enough. It's enough of my conditional life. I accept what I received, and now I will try humbly to practice what I received, to practice with my ears, with my tongue, with my old senses, to practice with my mind and heart. I accept, Gurudev is saying, a sign. Then certain specific peace of mind and heart is coming, and becoming established in the existence of devotee when he accepts something. And next stage is then it's not so complicated then. When I accept it, Daran, now I know what I want, what I have to do to attain that, what I want. And also, I want to love the object of my meditation. I don't want to spread my love on other things. I want, like a laser, I want to focus my love, my heart, my emotions, whatever you call it, is the synonym, actually. I want to focus my love on Shimati Radhika. Then dhyana starts, real meditation starting. Then mercy is coming when devotee express her determination to attain that goal. And 
it's not that mercy is not coming before, but devotee is not ready to properly receive that mercy. So Baba somewhere is speaking, it's not the problem of object, it's the problem of receiver. But when receiver, devotee who has to receive, is properly tuned with the object of his meditation, then naturally, spontaneously, this meditation is going without interruption. And this kind of meditation, now we are coming to the point of attract Hladini Shakti. To fully appear in the heart of devotee who is meditating without interruption. And then Dhruva Anusmrit appears. And Gauravani said so nicely, attachment is important. Because dhyana, deep meditation, is coming on the level of attachment. When devotee feels ashakti, because he already signed that he doesn't want anything else. Ashakti is appearing in his heart. He is starting to feel attachment for Shimati Radhika. Dhyana is established then. And by the more mercy, he is going on the another level. A deeper level, not higher level, no, deeper level. Dhruva Anusmrit, focus, more focus, Dhruva, like a pole star. Laser of his heart and my mind, Chittavrit, is more focused than Spurtis are coming. And this Spurtis, are nourishing his whole existence. These purti are nourishing his hankering, his faith, his steadiness, his attachment more intense, more intense, and more intense. And this stage is the stage of Bala. When Bala, so this is the reason why I said when Hladini Shakti penetrates in the heart more intensely and devotee is ready to receive it <laughs> properly, Bala is situated in his heart, Spurtis are coming, going, coming, going, there, it's the waves actually. Preparing the devotee for next step, which is Samadhi, pure prema level. So all the verses which we are reading here from Raghunath are written from the stage of Bhava. because he comes back on Sadakavesh. When he is like a Tulasi, Tulasi cannot write anything. <laughs> she is not writing the books. She is directly serving these blue eyes of Swamini, putting Kanjal, feeling her emotions, her need to meet Krishna, she doesn't have her time. She doesn't do it. It's not Seva. But when she, he comes out, vision finished, 
then he feels urge to write his emotions and also for the benefit of future generations like we are so fortunate to be in that category. So Dhruva Smrit is the stage of Bhav. And this Bhav, it means in this stage of Bhava, no one can attain with his own endeavor. Devotee should receive humbly in the patra, in the pot of his heart. But before that stage, he has to prepare his heart by nama, sankirtana, proper following of the mood of acharyas, the mood, it means emotions, in that way preparing slowly, slowly the heart, which will be able to receive more, more, more and more. So there is one sentence which Baba is wrote somewhere in Vilapa that in the beginning Sadaka has to find the most easiest way for his mind to fix the mind on some lila part of lila which will help him to fix the mind most easiest way Gurudev very nicely and practically saying, what comes to you? What comes to you now? Just think of that, stop your thoughts on that. Think of that. That will nourish your, that will nourish your mind and help him to fix. I like this. It gives me so hope, so much hope. The most easiest way. Don't go and all these Ashtakalya Lilas or whatever. No. It's just again Vaidhi. What is the easiest way for you? Which which Lila, which part of the Lila is most easiest way? And stop. Sit, like Guravani said. Sit. Sit in your mind, sit in your heart, and don't go anywhere else. <laughs> so that's, that will bring a devotee to the desirable goal and help him to pass through all these different stages of smarana, dharana, dhyana, dhruvanusmrit, samadhi. Find Raga is the easiest way. Find the easiest way for yourself. I think that everything is clear with this instruction. Without so much brrr, techni technical things. Sit in your mind and feel mercy which is coming to you. <laughs> I'm sorry, I took so long, but a very beautiful, very beautiful explanation. And uh, today I I felt before I did not think about it. Duruba, Duruba means very much determine, determination. Don't move. So this is Guru Dev saying like a stai Baba. Very determined, don't move, just one pointed. Anu means follow. And then smriti is kind of meditation. So, Goranga Sundara Baba say, in this Durba smriti, spirit is coming. So, but that spriti is not like, uh, 
not like uh, maybe also one vision, but it is say uh, this is like kind of movie. Like some leader is coming through by the mercy of Fradini Shakti, by the mercy of Radharani. Because the heart is so pure, and then Fradini Shakti into the heart, and by the mercy of Gurudev and Swamini, a kind of some kind of movie, like kind of movie is coming, going on. Then Samadhi. So this is, I'm saying like a little theoretically, sorry, because I don't have realization so much. And then, what is the difference of Durban Sumriti and Samadhi? This is very interesting. Durban Sumriti, he has some slight, slight consciousness. I'm meditating. But Samadhi completely forget. Completely in Swarupa Besha. He does not think any sadaka de, deha. See here in Raghunadas Gosam is completely in enter. Like dream. Yeah. Forget. Yeah. You know, sometimes dream, sometimes, you know, in dream, oh, actually I'm dreaming. It's some consciousness there. And some very deep into the dream, then no, I, no, I'm completely in that person. So this is the difference of Durban Sumriti and Samadhi. So this is a very interesting point. So therefore, if our meditation and become very deep, we forget this Sadaka Deha consciousness, completely in Swarupa Besh. So this is kind of why Gurudev stressing this one pointness. Because without one pointness, we cannot get the mercy of Radini Shakti fully. We cannot enter this, this kind of deep meditation. So that's my understanding. Why Gurudev stress one point, Stai Baba, Stai Baba, not Sanchari. That's uh, just I want to add a little bit. Because uh, his expression is so nice, you know. Rade, rade. Oh, thank you both so much. Um, maybe I, I just want to add a little bit more, because if we hear Truva, we will think about Truva Maharaj. Because Truva Maharaj, as we know, he was very fixed in his meditation, but actually he didn't had the right goal because he himself said, now that you are here, my Lord, I understand I was searching for class, but now I got some jewels. The next word is Anu. Anu means also small, serving like the smallest. So if we meditate like Truva Maharaj, completely fixed, with no deviation but on Anu, the service of the smallest, the half syllable, then Smriti will come, follow, it's a follow, and we will actually dive deep in automatically. And then next step we will lose our outer consciousness. So it's a very nice way actually shown, like a slight, slight into our real existence. I just want to give a picture because, you know, I'm like this completely. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now, in next paragraph, is explained actually the Dhruva Smriti of Raghunath. And Baba is saying, in this deep meditation, Sri Das Goswami serves Swamini by ornamenting her. In this Dhruva Anu Smriti meditation, does Goswami serve Swamini by ornamenting her? <laughs> In these words, he perceives Kajal Seva. 
the service of applying eyeliner, praying. When can I worship these eyes that tightly bind the Krishna elephant with even the slightest wink with eyeliner? Uh, one second, please. Okay. We need the prayer, lies, acquaintance with the mood, <clears throat> closeness, intimacy with the mood. In the prayer, we can hear how much Raghunath is intimate with Swami. Swamini is always victorious over him, Mohan. Hence, she is known as Jaya Shri. In Krishna Karanamrita is written, she whose beauty consists of superiority and victory. Beauty consists of superiority and victory. Beauty consists of superiority and victory. It's not just empty beauty. Mahabhava Swarupini Rade Takurani. She whose beauty consists of superiority and victory in gambling, joking, water games, love games, and so on and so on. Radharani's superiority is evident for her playful glances are Krishna's only support. She need not make any great movements with her eyes. The slightest movement is enough to tightly bind the Krishna elephant. There is abundance of her Madana Rasa infused in these playful glances. That's why they have so much power over the transcendental, youthful Cupid of Vrindavan. So we can recognize the power of meditation on Kama Gayatri Mantra. We can see here that Radhika's eyes are like her arrows. which are shooting in all senses of Krishna, not only in his eyes. Radhika's eyes are shooting the arrows in his ears, his sense of smell, his tongue. And by meditation on Kama Gayatri Mantra, devotee can establish his strong fixed seat, close by Radharani, In the association of Guru Manjari and other Manjaris, Anugatya following their feelings. And then even if he is Sadaka, not so much elevated, he can receive the drops of taste of relishing these beautiful Mahavanis. 
and this beautiful, sweet, victorious quality of Radhika and her sweet superiority. Because nothing can compare with her eyes. And through her eyes, it's so obvious that he is, she is expressing feeling which cannot be compared with anything else. And that is the love for her, Mohan. And, she, <clears throat> and it's enough, only slightest movement from the corners of the eyes, not even direct, long glance, long looking on Krishna, just shortly. Lavalesh, Lavalesh, moment of the moment of the moment. And then he is completely, he is losing his consciousness. His crown is falling down. He is spinning around himself. And she's doing it without any endeavor. Because she bound him very tightly with just slight glances of her beautiful blue eyes. And now we can see the superiority of Jayashri in Vrindavan. When Mother Yashoda wanted to bind the Krishna, she had to put some endeavor. She had to run and run and run after him. And when he finally agreed to give her mercy, he stopped and allowed her because of her love and endeavor to bind him. And this is the glories of Vatsalya Rasa. But the glories of Madhurya Rasa cannot compare with this. And Radhika, like the queen of this Madhurya Rasa, is the right example how she can bind the Krishna with just short lavalage. Very short. From the corners of her eyes, short glance. And this is the subject for meditation. Easy subject, not so complicated. In the Purvaraga condition, Krishna tells Radhika's Sakis. I became absorbed in staring at her spotless face, which is exquisitely sweet, like a lotus flower. In unseen way, this playful girl has bitten my heart like a female snake. When an arrow-like glance is fired from her wonderful bow-like eyebrows, Krishna, who is full of transcendental bliss, may even faint of ecstasy. 
So this is the Pushpa Banai. For Radhika's maidservants, they want to meditate on Radhika's glances, arrows, which she is shooting on her beloved. Krishna's devotees, they want to meditate in opposite way, that Krishna is shooting others. And yeah, this is right. But we are not interested for such kind of meditation. We want our Jaya Shri, who is so superior in her sweetness, beauty, and love. And no one can compare with her. Srila Prabhupada Nanda Saraswati writes in Radha Rasa Sudanidi, verse 39. When can I worship that Radhika, whose arrow-like glances cause the Prince of Raja to faint, his yellow dhoti to fall, fail off, his crown to lose him and his flute to fall from his hand. When can I worship that Radhika with Rasa? How can we worship Radhika without Rasa? Only someone who is deeply absorbed in his own bhava and rasa with Radharani, relationship with Radhika, can properly worship Radhika. Prabhupada Nandasarasat is saying, when can I worship that Radhika whose glances cause Prince Raja to faint? His yellow dotted to fall. That Radhika, she is chanting the Krishna. I want to worship with juice, with love, with rasa, with mellow. Always flowing, flowing, flowing in that mellow. Because Radhika is worshipping Krishna with rasa. And maidservants are worshipping Radhika with this sweet mellow of Manjari Bhava or Bhavo Lasa Rati. So this bhava, we can see now, this bhava is important, emotions, when we were talking in the beginning, emotions are very important to bring to rasa. The more emotions bhava is intense, it will bring to deeper layers and levels of rasa. And then rasa will provoke, we give back more bhava. And the more bhava will bring to more rasa. And more rasa will bring to more bhava. And then comes ocean of ananda. For whom? For Yuga Lakishore, between them, Ananda is established because of this exchange of passionate Bhava and Rasa, Rasa Bhava, Bhava and Rasa, Rasa Bhava. And also maidservants of Radhika, especially Radhika. They have opportunity 
to taste this Ananda of Yugala Kishore. Ananda is result of mixture of Bhav, Mahabhava Swarupini, Iraso Vaisaha. And they are together, then ocean of Ananda, bliss, happiness is present. For their own happiness, but also for the happiness of the Radhika's maidservants. Their happiness is the Ananda for Manjaris. And they are witnessing how it works practically. Manjaris are witnessing it, isn't it, my brothers? Manjaris are witnessing it. How when Bhava is, is increasing, Mahava is increasing, Rasa is increasing. Rasa is increasing, Mahava is increasing. And this is constant anuraga, always new, always fresh. Exchange of love. And when someone is witnessing and serving this love, <laughs> Druvanu Smrit, ocean of Druvanu Smrit. <laughs> Sorry, I took. Her glances. Ah, Krishna's only support. Sorry, I, I, I cannot come far from this sentence. Please share more on this. Radharana's, Radharani's superiority is evident. For her playful glances are Krishna's only support. Only support. Krishna is really peaceful and complete, completely complete, the most complete. When she, he is in the embrace of Radhika, when he is touched by her glances. Otherwise, he is always looking more and more and more, more, more. And with gopis, he cannot be completely satisfied. He is trying. He is putting endeavor. He is a womanizer and he is trying. But all the gopis together cannot give him the place, the seat, proper seat, that in that seat he can be completely satisfied and crazy out of love in that satisfaction. Only Radhika, who is embodiment and source of love, can give him such kind of place. Beside her, or when she puts him on her tights, or when she when he is studied, he's He's sitting when he studied. He's completely <laughs> paralyzed. This is the sitting place for Krishna. Mother cannot paralyze him with her love. Friends cannot paralyze him with her, their love. Sakis. Even Sakis, they cannot paralyze him. But Radhika can and very easily. And then... This is the only natural place for Krishna to be with energy which is giving the pleasure to everyone, even to him. So this is the sitting place. Radhika is the place of his worship. Devi, his playfulness, without her, there is no 
so much playfulness. He is fixed, really, when he is with her. So maybe we can learn also from Krishna <laughs> how to the only solution to be fixed and in normal position. Yes, Krishna is in normal position only when he is in Radhika, with Radhika. This is his normal position. I'm sorry. That's the point. And we wanted to hear that. We need to hear that. We have to follow the example of Krishna, our only support. When Radharani is looking at us. It's his only support. And that means he is looking for her eyes. Otherwise, how he could see the slightest movement of her eyes if he is not completely fixed? This is support. You are fixed. You're holding. You're holding somewhere. Krishna is holding his eyes completely fixed on Radharani's eyes. He is holding himself. This is his support, his normal position. Otherwise, he has no support. So this is the meaning, one of the meaning of the word Govinda. All his go senses are completely supported, satisfied when he vit meet Radhika. And this kind of Krishna, Manjaris wants to serve. Someone who is supported only with Shimata Radharani, when all his senses are supported, she is supporting, otherwise he is wild. So go, Vinda. And for that, Gurudev is saying, you have to increase your senses, your go, spiritual senses. To be supported with Swamini. Goravani, may I please ask you, I don't have a strength anymore. Can you continue to read, please? Just 15 minutes, I don't know. Please, I'm sorry that I'm putting you in this situation. No problem. I, I, anyway, I have a, a question to you. Maybe you can support me tomorrow. And we can just follow reading here, if you like. Sure. I'm supposed to read tomorrow, so we, we could, you know, it took some time now. We didn't went so far, so maybe we can just continue tomorrow, if you like. Perfect. It's time to stop, and tomorrow we will continue. We could also go a little bit further, as you like, but no, tomorrow but we can continue anyway. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, last you week like. I'm very, no, no, last week I'm very weak and a uh, little bit sick, so please, tomorrow we can continue. Okay. You, you, will, you will read from where I started, where I stop, and let's see what will happen. 
if Jayananda Maharaj is allowing us, giving us permission to do this. Thank you very much. I thank you love all you. for your kind association and uh, thank you very much, Goranga Sundara, for sharing all this with us. It's not common. It's not common that Babas are coming together like this and sharing like this. I'm so grateful. I'm so thankful. I'm so happy. And I know Gurudev is always with us, also he doesn't show always up, but I know that actually it's on the base of his mercy happening everything here. So thank you also Gurudev and thank you all Vaishnavas and thank you Radharani and see you tomorrow. Radhe Radhe, thank you. Jai Nandaji, thank you very much for your sharing. Punyam also, I don't see you, but <coughs> thank you very much. Radhe, Radhe. Embrace our beloved Guru Dev and touch him on the feet, please, in our own name. <laughs> yes. Radhe, Radhe.